We've all seen videos where we holiday forward X number of years in Football Manager to see what Football Manager simulates will happen to the current crop, the current database. What you haven't seen before is what we've got in this video today. I've teamed up with the FM Retro Group who've spent the last couple of months putting together a database that starts in the 1999-2000 season. So a 20-year-old database. They've sorted out all the teams, the players, the graphics, the kits, the faces, it's absolutely ridiculous the amount of work these guys have put together over the last couple of months. They've given me access to the beta version of their database. You'll be able to get access to that very soon yourselves as well as a link down in the description below for their Twitter where you can find out all the information about launches of their beta and the full database that they're aiming to get ready for the start of FM21. But they've given me a sneak peek and allowed me to holiday forward 20 years so effectively to present day based on a 1999-2000 Football Manager database, we're going to track through the last 20 years of real-life football and see what would happen if Football Manager was in charge. Of course, if you are new to the channel, because this is something a little bit different from a typical Football Manager video, I do make daily Football Manager videos on a normal database. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications for all that kind of stuff. And if you enjoy this video, like it, share it around. The wider we can get this video out into the world, the more people will see the database, which will then obviously encourage more people to get involved with helping to build the database. If your league isn't in this, when we look at it, get in touch with the guys at the FM Retro Group and ask to do it for them and i'm sure they'll integrate you within the group somehow and hopefully go on to make this a bigger and better thing that is going to be around for years to come i also stream football manager four nights a week over on twitch twitch.tv slash leluge i stream every monday wednesday thursday and sunday so it'd be cool to have some of you come over and hang out with me over there too but let's let's dive into the database and have a little look so as you can see um it is we've gone back through a time machine the one thing they're not able to do is change the in-game clock so we have to kind of take away 20 years from every date we see in game so although it's showing 24th of june 2019 this is actually the 24th of june 1999 you can see from the clubs that are in the premier league you can see from the kits that they've got um there you go a classic manchester united kit in the fa carling premiership um with a squad of players that um, I, I hear this squad of players did quite well. Teddy Sheringham wanted by Derby on loan. Don't go to Derby on loan, Teddy Sheringham. That would be a silly thing for you to do. Um, but they've got all of the players with their pictures, with with accurate attributes for them based on where they were in 99-2000. Um, there are occasionally going to be one or two players in here, I guess, that might still be involved. I mean, there you go. Gary Neville's not got his TV pundit or his management stats. He's got Gary Neville, the 24-year-old right back who can't grow a proper beard yet. Um, he's got those stats. And even, even that, it's a ridiculous amount of work that these guys have put in. But they've also put in loads and loads of players who will appear in the game in the future as the database goes on. So as we holiday through this 20 years, we should see the likes of um, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Messi. I mean, was, was Messi around in 1999? Probably not. Oh, no, there he is. Lionel Messi, a 14-year-old free agent who, there you go, he's joining Barcelona in two years' time. So there's a reminder of what the Premier League looked like back then. Um, Bradford fans having a lovely time at the moment. Leeds in the Premier League as well. Um, Sheffield Wednesday. Wimbledon still existing. What a, what, a, what a time. What a wonderful thing. Wimbledon still existing. Will Wimbledon still go out of business? I don't actually know if they've got it coded in that Wimbledon disappear. Or do we potentially get to see what could have happened to Wimbledon if they didn't? Um, and they've got the major leagues set up in here as well. So if we jump over to La Liga. Um, let's jump to La Liga. Oh, we have jumped to La Liga. Have a look at the Barcelona squad that we had back then. I mean, we've got Cliver, We've got Littman. In, we've got Rivaldo. You know, it's... it's. Uh, I remember playing the old Championship Manager games when these were the squads. Um, it's absolute madness that this has been set up. Um, okay, let's have a look at Juventus from 1999. Just to check. Sunday Ollis. I mean, talk about a Championship Manager legend. If you didn't sign him every year on Championship Manager, you were doing it wrong. The chance to manage a 27-year-old Zinedine Zidane, who's knocking about at uh, at Juventus. If we jump over to the Bundesliga as well, see what's going on in the Bundesliga. 
who was in the Bayern Munich team back in 1999. Is there going to be people I recognise on here? Marcus Babel. I remember Marcus Babel. Wowzers. Absolute madness. Right. I think the best thing for us to do is to start holidaying forward. We can see how the database is set up. We can see we are in for some uh, for some interest. Oh, look at that kit. You can see that we're in for some interesting shenanigans. If you want to have a look through the actual 1999 database in more detail, the link's in the description to get onto the FM Retro Group Twitter. Like I say, get hold of the database for yourself. How old is Steven Gerrard at the start of this? A 19-year-old Steven Gerrard. Wow. Let's, uh, let's holiday forward a bit and and see how we get on over the next five years or so so we've jumped forward to 2005 this is the end of the 2004 2005 season as you can see man united have enjoyed something of a spell of dominance they've won the premier league every single time i mean i guess you it stands to reason this is this is the famous treble winning Manchester United team that's starting off this database. They were always going to be pretty dominant. But the immediate thing I'm noticing that we've not got is no Arsenal Invincibles because they certainly didn't win the league. Manchester United winning the league. Wimbledon still existing. When did they when did they disappear in real life? Um, let's see who's in this Manchester United squad, their championship winning squad. Who have been their main players? Who's their top scorer? Ruud van Nistelrooy. So this is now a 28-year-old Ruud van Nistelrooy who arrived when he was supposed to arrive and scored goals when he was supposed to score goals. Ronaldinho has made it to Manchester United now at 25 years old. Uh, David Beckham, age 30, still there. He'd left by now, hadn't he, in reality? Look at the amount of goals and assists that man's scoring. That is a ridiculous record for David Beckham, who looks like he might be doing a, uh, a full career at United now, along with Raul as well. This is like a wonder team for Manchester United. Who are there? Uh, so Ronaldinho, Beckham, Raul, Van Nistelrooy, Rio Ferdinand still there, skulls knocking around as you would expect. Um, that is absolute madness. Frank Lampard didn't go to Chelsea. So Frank Lampard left West Ham and went to Manchester United, where he's now Manchester United's number eight as a 26-year-old. <laughs> Chelsea fans, how do you feel about that? My goodness. And there's the youngsters coming through at the right sort of age groups again. Uh, Rio Ferdinand. Danny Welbeck's now a thing, as is Chris Smalling. He's now arrived in the save. Um, let's look at the Premier League itself. So Arsenal are the runners-up. Let's look at the past winners. So it's been Manchester United dominance. Runners-up, we've had Tottenham, Chelsea, Liverpool and Arsenal um, as competitors in there. But if we look at the big transfers for each season and sort this, if we go back to there... And look at the biggest transfers each season. So transfer fees are going to be an interesting thing for us to keep an eye on to see how transfer fees are changing. So Francesco Totti went to Arsenal in uh, in the year 2000 and he's still there. He is now an Arsenal man. Uh, Cannavaro went to Manchester United. Who else? Have we? Sean Wright Phillips going to Southampton. Kevin Davis went to Manchester City. And now he's at Marseille. What a different career path for Kevin Davis. Poor old Bolton. He never played for Bolton. Or did he? Did he play for Bolton before? When did he play for Bolton? I can't keep track of all these different universes. It's it's breaking my mind. Vieira leaving Arsenal in 2001 to go to Real Madrid. That feels like some big news. That explains why there was no Invincibles, because there's no Patrick Vieira, because he's now Real Madrid's number eight, although he's now wanted by Manchester United. Imagine that. Imagine Patrick Vieira going to Manchester United. Dirk Kout didn't go to Liverpool. He went to Middlesbrough instead. Chris Sutton ended up at Porto. David Unsworth's another one who was always a good signing in Championship Manager. He's did he, did he, went to, did he go to Newcastle in real life at some point? I feel he might have done. Um, Raul, the big transfer of 2003, going from Real Madrid to Manchester United, we already knew about. Doesn't seem any more absolutely massive deals back then. And then the big deal from 2003 is Gareth Barry going to Chelsea. So Chelsea fans, rather than Frank Lampard, you got Gareth Barry for more than Manchester United paid for Frank Lampard. You're feeling good now? I bet you're feeling good. Um, Gareth Barry's now just crying into his tea. Sorry, Gareth. Uh, Michael Ball was another one who was always a fantastic championship manager signing. Stuart Downing went from Middlesbrough to Charlton. That's a weird move, especially because Charlton have now been relegated. It's a very odd move. Stuart Downing, I guess, not going to have the same 
the same kind of career he had in real life. We'll have to see. Does he end up at Liverpool? JJ Okocha went to Arsenal and is now at Shakhtar. So another one who hasn't hasn't passed through Bolton when he was supposed to. Where are Bolton? Did Bolton even make it to the Premier League? Let's have a look through some of the other leagues as well. A quick look. So Real Madrid have just wrestled the title away from Barcelona. Valencia winning it for a couple of years in a row. Um, if we have a look at the big transfers that have affected La Liga, just to see where players have ended up. Xavi Alonso has gone to Leeds. Leeds still in the Premier League? A Leeds that is still in the Premier League with Xavi Alonso in midfield for them. Danielson went to Arsenal, as he did previously. Um, let's go back a year. Shevchenko going from uh, Bayern to Real Madrid. Does that mean no AC Milan? No, he wasn't. So he went from Milan to Bayern. Did that? That didn't happen in real life, did it? Or did it? Um, and then to Real Madrid. Um, no other obvious ones standing out to me on there. The Raul transfer is huge. I still can't get over the Raul transfer. Um, there's Vieira as well, which is another massive one. This is this is like a walk back through my childhood. And who's been winning in Serie A? Serie A between Juventus and Inter. We should probably look at Champions League and World Cup winners as well. So champion, was it even called the Champions League? When did it become the Champions League? So Champions League winners, Manchester United winning it in 99. Uh, Real Madrid, Man United, Inter, Man United, Juventus, Juventus. So Man United are just like an utterly dominant team with Roy Keane and Frank Lampard and maybe Patrick Vieira about to join them in that midfield. Is there any stopping Manchester United? I guess the question is, when Fergie retires, similar to what we had in real life, when Fergie retires, what do United do next? Because they're clearly unstoppable dominant monsters in this world because they've just hoovered up all the best players and are winning everything. Um, we will have had a World Cup as well. So England won the World Cup! Hooray! England winning the 2002 World Cup. Kevin Keegan, in Kevin Keegan's England. Wow! Can we see who the uh, who the England squad is? Alan Shearer on the left wing, and we won the World Cup. This is a world of nonsense. Alan Shearer, who is he's an accomplished left winger at 34 years old. This is a different Alan Shearer to the one I remember, but still playing for England at 34. And they've figured out how to get Gerard Lampard and Scholes into the same midfield with Beckham, with Gerard playing deep behind the other two. Um, who is that? Sol Campbell playing left back with Ferdinand Woodgate and Neville and Nigel Martin in goal. I feel like that's an England 11 that never played together. Michael Owen, where's he now? Michael Owen still at Liverpool at age 25, but seems like he's gone off the boil just like he did at that sort of age in real life uh, what about the euros who's winning the euros uh germany winning the euros in 2004 but we can't see them this we can there we go so this is your current german team um means less to me i don't really know who was in the german team at the time i don't recognize many of these names neuville ricken alarm there's a few of these i remember babel khan I wasn't an expert on German football that back then. Much like now, I'm not an expert on German football. Right, let's jump forward another five years and see if Manchester United are still dominating the world. So it's now 2010, another five years have passed. Quick answer, yes, Manchester United are still dominating English football at least, with Leeds runners-up in 2010. What an alternate universe you've got, Leeds fans. What a world this would have been for you, eh? You'd have loved it. Um, are Wimbledon still around? Wimbledon don't look like they're there anymore. Are Wimbledon, let's just drop down a division. Wimbledon, where are you? I'm worried for you. Wimbledon still exists as well. Wonderful stuff. Uh, so Liverpool did win the Premier League, though, in 2008. So didn't have to wait quite so long as they had to wait in reality. You can see we've got a few new gens now starting to mix in with the... Uh, with the players who were already in the database and the youngsters will start to come through naturally, um, which is always going to happen. It's football manager. There's still going to be new gens start to come through. Um, but Manchester United, st I mean, they, they've won a lot of Premier Leagues in a row there. Alex Ferguson is still the manager. Roque Santa Cruz is Manchester United's star player in 2010. Well, well, Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale is Manchester United's hot prospect having joined from Southampton. So didn't go to Tottenham. He's gone to Manchester United. Did they ever sign Patrick Vieira? That's the question. Let's look at this dominant squad again um, and see who 
see who the top scorers are. Kak has now made his way through there. Welbeck scoring goals. And in amongst all these stars, Danny Welbeck still knocking around the place. It doesn't look like they did sign Vieira. If they did, he came away. David Beckham is still there, aged 34. David Beckham never leaving Manchester United and playing a lot of times for England. An awful lot of times for England. Uh, let's uh, let's have a look at the Premier League's transfers again because that's the. Uh, in addition, I mean the the main things I'm interested in in what is just a quick look at this database is who's been winning the major competitions and who the big transfers are. Obviously, there's going to be so many little gems in here that I won't even have noticed on this first run through that you'll be you'll be finding your little nuggets of awesome as you play through these yourselves, and I would love to hear about them down in the comments. Um, but an interesting thing for me is transfer fees haven't got huge. It's 2010 and the biggest transfer in the Premier League is a £32 million deal. So that suggests transfers aren't going to go as crazy as they did in real life. Um, Olivier Giroud going to Southampton. Interesting. That's one of the biggest transfers of that year. Joe Cole going from West Ham to Leeds. I feel like that's quite late for Joe Cole to make his move from West Ham, actually. Um, so Joe Cole staying at West Ham until 2008 and then going to be a star for Leeds in the Premier League. That Every part of that sentence confused my mouth on the way out. Emil Heskey ended up at West Ham, didn't go to Liverpool. Keep jumping back. There's Alonso going from Leeds now to Real Madrid. That's when Kaká went to Manchester United as well. PK went from Deportivo to Liverpool. Let's have a look at PK's career path. So PK went from Barcelona to Deportivo rather than Manchester United and then to Liverpool. So Gerard PK is now 23 years old and starring at the back for a Liverpool team that has won the Premier League. Christ oh, there's Cristiano Ronaldo. What's he been up to? 25 years old now. Cristiano Ronaldo didn't go to Manchester United. He went to Newcastle from Sporting and he's now at Chelsea. Um, and doesn't, I mean, he's not scoring as many goals as you would expect Cristiano Ronaldo to score. Only five goals in his most recent Premier League season. I assume there's a big move in this man's future, surely. Only playing in the UEFA Cup. I feel like Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be a little bit disappointed with how his career is going if someone lets him know how he was getting on in an alternate universe. But I guess the trick is not to let him know because it will just upset the man. And he doesn't need that. Um... How far back? I think this is one. Harry Kuehl. There we go. Harry Kuehl went to Real Madrid. So Harry Kuehl, in this world, Harry Kuehl, better career than Cristiano Ronaldo. And there's Robinho going from Inter to Liverpool. Samuel Etu at Leeds. Leeds. I mean, Leeds. Leeds fans. What a world. Nigel Martin's still there. How is Nigel Martin only 33 in 2010? I feel like that man was like 40 when I was born. I don't understand how Nigel Martin's so young and still leads his goalkeeper as they're doing awesome in the Premier League. It makes no sense to me. Patrick Clivert went to Tottenham and had a lovely time. Patrick Clivert's been one of the Premier League's top scorers for many years playing for Tottenham. Right, La Liga, what's been going on here? I guess the question is, what's gone on with Messi? We've got to find Messi. Should we just look at Barcelona? Is Messi there? Messi? David De Gea is there. Michael Ball is there. Javier Saviola, another championship manager legend. There's Messi. There's Messi. So he is at Barcelona. Only 22 years old. Wanted by Liverpool and Manchester United. I think it's going to be interesting to see what's going on with Lionel Messi in the uh, in the next in the next jump forward in time that we do. But we don't want Barcelona's transfers. We want La Liga's transfers. So La Liga is still considered the best league in the world. Um, there's Harry Kuehl arriving. Ronaldo. That fat Ronaldo. It's fat Ronaldo. Fat Ronaldo's at Real Madrid. Um, Lucas Leiva. Barcelona to Juventus. No Liverpool in his journey. I can't believe Michael Ball's career madness I mean he's played for everyone Everton Arsenal Man United Real Madrid Arsenal again Barcelona but never gone for more than 13 million quid what a bizarre world what a wonderful world um jump forward a bit again there's Alonso going from Leeds to Real Madrid and there's PK's move again let me know if there's anything really interesting on here that I'm not noticing as I'm looking at it Mikel Arteta went going from Barcelona to Hertha Berlin 
Juan Mata went to Chelsea. That's the movie made in real life, isn't it? Is that the, at the right age as well for Mata? It's interesting how some of the some of the real life deals happen at roughly the right time as well. It is very interesting. I could just sit and nose through. I will probably be sitting and nosing through this all afternoon and editing this down to something that's like a video. So if it's very choppy, it's because I recorded for five hours and had to make it into a video. Um, let's have a look. In fact, Ballon d'Or is going to be an interesting thing. Who's been winning the Ballon d'Or? We're 10 years in. Michael Owen winning the 2029 Ballon d'Or. I was writing him off before, but he's still at Liverpool, now 30 years old, played for over 400 games, scored over 250 goals for Liverpool. Um, that's not been a bad career, has it, for Michael Owen? Javier Saviola the year before. Ronaldo winning it a couple of times. Um, and then skipping back through history, Morientes, Owen, Nistel, Van Nistelrooy, Montella. Is it bad that I don't know who this guy is? I feel like I probably should. Don't know who he is at all. I recognise all of the other names. We're not yet at the point where I, this is around the point where in real life I gave up on top level football because it just all became about money. So this is this is going to be quite interesting when we holiday forward again because there's going to be players I might not realise who they are because I just zoomed in on sort of lower league football after this point. But up until this, up until now, this all looks familiar, even though it's crazy town. Um, there's been another World Cup as well, hasn't there? And France have won the what was it, the 2010 World Cup? Well, in fact, the 2010 World Cup's going on. So France won the 2006 World Cup with Germany runners-up, England third-placed. Who's, who's the England team now? That's now what the England team looks like. Who is Steven Ventura? He's a new gen. Okay. Um, so there's going to be a few new gens in here. Which, again, is Nigel Martin. 118 caps for England for Nigel Martin. <laughs> What an alternate universe Nigel Martin's had. Gerard, Barry and Lampard playing together in midfield. Lampard still at Manchester United. Is Gerard still at Liverpool? Gerard is still at Liverpool, now 29 years old. Um, Joe Cole playing where he should have played for England and never really got the opportunity to. And I guess Jacob Bell is a new gen as well. Yeah. Is there anyone else in here who seems like a mad addition to an England squad? Wayne Routledge has played nine times for England and is now at Aston Villa having left Manchester United. Right, let's do one more time jump. I promised you to bring us up to modern day. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to jump forward 10 years and bring us to the current season to see what's happened. So it is now 2020. And as you can see, Manchester United still winning the Premier League. Leeds still a top three team. Absolute madness. Um, let's look through the past winners again. Manchester United just utterly dominant. Chelsea, Tottenham, Chelsea, Tottenham. So Chelsea and Tottenham trying to wrestle it away from United a little bit. Arsenal didn't win the league at any point during this 20-year spell. Neither did Manchester City. Chelsea only with the two wins. Tottenham with two wins. And Liverpool with the one Premier League victory. But they look like they've now fallen well off the pace. Is Fergie still there? No. I don't know who Frank Pagelsdorf is. He starts this database at Hamburg and has passed through Germany, heard to Berlin, Leeds and became Manchester United manager two years ago, which I assume is when Fergie retired or have they had a couple of managers? No, so Ferguson retired in 2014 um, and then Daniel Passerea, who's now at Tottenham and has won the league with Tottenham. Um, again, don't know who this guy is. Uruguay manager in real life at the start of the save. Um, so he was manager for a bit. Um, and then Paulo Cesar Capaggio. Again, I don't know who he is. Brazilian fella. But it looks like... the ah, Hello, I've just seen who Manchester United's captain is. Leon, a 32-year-old Lionel Messi, captain of Manchester United, where he's been for the entirety of that 10-year spell that we've just fast-forwarded through. £59 million signing in 2030. And he's uh, he's had a lovely time. I mean, he's not scored the amount of goals he scored in real life, but players tend not to in Football Manager. But he's still Manchester United's, or one of their best players. Leeds is just fascinating to me. Mo Salah, Leeds captain. <laughs> well, 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 uh, Tottenham, Sergio Aguero is Tottenham's captain. This is amazing. 
Oh, this is so much fun. So Aguero, Tottenham captain. Where are Manchester City? They're nowhere. Oh, they're down here. Arsenal. Glenn Johnson, vice captain for Arsenal in 2020. Still sponsored by Dreamcast. That feels a little out of date now. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo. Had he gone to Chelsea before? He had. Yeah, he was already there. So check. Cristiano Ronaldo's had an amazing Chelsea career. Is that compensation for never getting Frank Lampard? Chelsea fans, let me know. Liverpool, Raheem Sterling is still at Liverpool. There you go, 25 years old. Raheem Sterling never leaving Liverpool. He had one amazing season for goals. He must have played up front that, that, that year. At number six, Raheem Sterling for Liverpool. Uh, Manchester City, who I guess never got their money, which may be why they never exploded. I probably would have carried on watching this version of football. Um, Sunderland and Blackburn still in the Premier League and Charlton. Leicester. Bournemouth made it to the Premier League regardless. That is interesting because at the start of this save, Bournemouth would have been well down the leagues. So they've made it up to the Premier League anyway. So that was obviously just always destined to happen. Bournemouth were always going to become a Premier League team. I find that really interesting. Callum Wilson, top scorer for Nottingham Forest, though, in the Championship. Right, let's look at big transfers. Did we ever get to silly money? It looks like we didn't because the biggest transfer, again, £32 million in the season just gone. And a lot of these now are going to be are going to be new gens or players I don't know if they're new gens or not. I mean, I can see De Jong went from Juventus to Chelsea. So he came through at Willem. Is that how you say that? Went to Zebra under... Went to Juventus. You need to change Zebra under 23. Um, and is now at Chelsea. So he's never gone to Ajax or Barcelona. Rashford left Manchester United at 22 to go to Watford. That's interesting. Why would he do that? It looks like he was playing regularly because Watford are a decent side. That's why. What a shock. Watford doing well in Football Manager. Who'd have thought? And then I'm just, I'm really leaving that there for you to have a look at because there's so, I'm going to make a fool of myself if I try and, if I try and pick out whether players are real players or not. There's Alexander-Arnold at 21 years old. So came through the Liverpool youth team, but never made it. Never made it. Uh, played two games for Liverpool before dropping down a division to play for Leicester. He is now back in the Premier League playing for Aston Villa and playing for England. So it's not that he wasn't good enough. This is this is the Trent Alexander-Arnold that we're familiar with. But for whatever reason, Liverpool never gave him a chance and he's now starring for Aston Villa. So that's just some pretty poor management, if you ask me. Harry Maguire's at West Ham with only one England cap. Um, Aubameyang's at Atletico Madrid now, having been at Tottenham. Well, Mane from Manchester United to Real Madrid there. Have we got any more? Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Neither of those clubs are Tottenham. So Harry Kane came through at Tottenham. But again, similar to the Alexander-Arnold situation. Harry Kane is good enough. Look at that Premier League career. Look at that England career. Harry Kane is good enough. I thought he had a moustache there, but it was just a just a bit of blurry picture, I think. Um, but Harry Kane was good enough, but Tottenham didn't think so. So they sold him to Burnley, dropping down a division, and then he's gone through Everton, and he's now at Chelsea, banging in goals for fun. Who did Tottenham have up front that year for Harry Kane to have been deemed not good enough to even give a try to? It's absolute madness, some of these management decisions that you get. I want more examples of that. There's Trent moving again. Maguire moving again. So some of these players who are more associated with long stays at clubs have become journeymen as they've struggled to find a home. There's Harry Kane on the move again as another example of it. Zaha seems to be moving around a lot as well. So he started at Palace, went to Chelsea rather than Man United, spent loads of time out on loan at various clubs and then went to Valencia. Well, how many? How far back we can go? We've got a few more. Neymar. Hello, Neymar. Leaving Southampton. So Neymar went to Atletico Madrid. Southampton then able to spend a huge amount of money. A £30 million transfer for Southampton in this world is massive. Had him for three years and sold him on to Chelsea. So Chelsea have now got Neymar and Ronaldo in the same team, yet haven't won the Premier League. No, they did. They won it a couple of times, didn't they? 
And there's Gareth Bale, who clearly didn't make it at Manchester United, despite being one of the hot prospects at United, ended up leaving in a cut price deal to Middlesbrough and passing through Liverpool. Oh, no, he went on loan. to. So, in fact, he struggled to make it at Liverpool as well. Gareth Bale not having the kind of career I guess he would have been hoping for. I want more examples like that. Jamie Vardy, he started in non-league, don't you know? I don't know if you've ever seen a Jamie Vardy game on TV. He started in non-league. Um, in this version, he starts at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, and rather rather than dropping into non-league, ends up being bought for a ridiculous amount of money by Charlton. That's a huge transfer for a player who'd never played for two teams who weren't even in the Premier League. Um, he then went to Everton, where he was for years. Then Southampton is now at Marseille. There you go. We found Kevin De Bruyne now. Kevin De Bruyne of Tottenham. So Milan, then Tottenham. That's his career path. Is there any other huge stars that we've not just noticed knocking around the place? Manuel Neuer. Long, long career at Schalke and then went to Arsenal. So never stopping via Bayern Munich. Juan Mata went to Juventus. There's Joe Cole going to Arsenal from Leeds. What did he end up doing? Joe Cole is now an assistant manager, an unemployed assistant manager, but has had a pretty solid career. Joe Cole playing 168 times for England. That's an, He can get on board. This is basically an alternate universe run by Nigel Martin and Joe Cole, I think. And Ronaldo and Messi and Bale and Neymar not having as much of a good time. This is the Joe Cole universe. Right, let's have a quick look to see who's winning the other major leagues. So La Liga, which I don't even need to, I don't need to type that in. It's right there. La Liga is still being won by Barcelona. A Barcelona team that their star player is a new gen. They've got a Jair. Is he a right back? No, I would have. Oh, I'd have loved that. I'd have loved that. See him doing some Jair things for Barcelona. Lazio look like they're the current dominant team in Italy. Who's their star man? Bunch of new gens. Bundesliga is being dominated. But I mean, when was the last time? Hold, hold the phone, boys and girls. A Bayern Munich still a thing. A Bundesliga where Bayern Munich have won the league twice, four times in twenty years. If you're an, if you're a, a German football fan who doesn't support Bayern Munich, you're having a lovely time. Borussia Dortmund fans, absolutely delighted. With their vice captain Thomas Muller. There's so many little gems in this database that we could pick out. We could spend all day picking little gems out from here. But let's look at the big competitions. Look at the World Cup, Champions League, that kind of thing. We'll look at the Ballon d'Or again. So England won the World Cup twice in that 20 year period. Um, finished runners up to Belgium. France won it twice as well. Let's have a look at the Euros, not the Eurod. They're not even called the Euros, are they? The European Football Championship. Germany winning it four times in a row. And then Italy winning a couple of times. Champions League. Champions League is pretty much dominated by English teams and Barcelona. Leeds won the Champions League twice. Leeds fans. Leeds fans. Let me know let me know who you are down in the comments. Would you have enjoyed this 20 years more than the one you've had? Barcelona winning a couple of times, but no Champions League wins in there for Oh, no, there is one for Liverpool. The one for Real Madrid really early on as well. But Manchester United have now won the Champions League. One, two, three, four, eight times. It says just there, I don't need to count. Eight times Champions League winners, Manchester United. Liverpool fans don't like this alternate universe. Because they're now five times Champions League winners to Man United, eight. But as compensation, you've got to keep Raheem Sterling. And Steven Gerrard is a legend. Went and finished his career at LA Galaxy. Is that what he did in real life? I feel like, I feel like that's what he did in real life. Uh, Ballon d'Or is the last thing that we're going to look at. So Ballon d'Or winners. Um, we're starting to get some of the new gens appearing in here now. A lot of the new gens, in fact. The last non-new gen to win was Saviola, who's won it. I mean, he was a championship manager hero, so it's no surprise that he won that a lot. Berbatov winning as recently as 2011. Saviola's won it loads of times. The, the really interesting thing for me here is never winning the Ballon d'Or, Ronaldo or Messi. And I find that really interesting that they've had such alternative careers. 
But that brings us to the end of our little exploration of the FM Retro Group's retro database. Like I say, we've barely even scratched the surface and traveling through 20 years, I could have spent three hours just looking at the database before you hit continue for the first time. But it has given us an interesting look at an alternative 20 years that we've just experienced in real life. Um, let me know if you get hold of the database, if your holidaying forward 20 years ends up the same way, or if you end up doing a save in this database as well. Like I say, to get hold of the database yourself, make sure you follow the FM Retro Group on Twitter. All the details of how to get it will be on there. And uh, yeah, let me know how you get on. And let me know if you want to see me dig into this a little bit deeper and what you'd maybe like to see me do with this database going forward to try and squeeze some more interesting content out of it because like i say barely scratching the surface if you have enjoyed it though please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for loads of football manager videos we make football manager videos every single day and thank you very much for watching